Yo. Morning, boys. Get the chat going. Oh, beautiful. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Awesome. How you guys doing this morning? Good. Doing good. Great to hear. Great to hear. Um, Sammy, you, you doing well? Yeah, all good. All good here. Great to hear, man. All right, let's get right into it. I just want to check out Jamie's chart real quick, make sure he's uh, looking at the right stuff. Okay, so you're waiting for that break of resistance over there. Are you looking for a pullback by any chance? So I figured right where the hash line is at is the area that is creating support. All the way to the left, you would have to you would have to zoom it in on your chart. There's an area that was resistance. So if it does a pullback because that range, so the entire range there is about 93 pips. Mm -hmm. So if it pulls back and creates a break and retest below that hash line, then I can take it down because that range from the hash to the next zone is 54 pips. Mm. Which is a nice uh, zone. Yeah. So can definitely, because we have all this nice clean traffic that we've created on the upside here, yeah. So I figure, worst case, if we do this, I can catch it down. Yes. TP down here. When it creates another area of support and it starts to do, you know, its thing going back up, mm -hmm. I can catch it going up. Yes, sir. And this is what you want. Right, you want to be able to buy at a bigger discount. Mm -hmm. Walking into a store, give me the lower price. Right, you don't want to be buying at the high price, hoping that you know the value of that product goes up. You know what I'm saying? Yep, absolutely. But like again, the the the, the analysis is right. Like it's it's perfect. But again, like th this is what I'd be looking for is get a clean move to the left. I would not take this until it retests right here. If you're going to take that pullback. But then wait for that support to be held and take this thing right up. Too many hours. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, let's get into the fundamental calendar over here. So we had, we had some data coming out of uh, Great Britain over here. You had CBI industrial order expectations over here was down. Missed the mark over here. NPC member Tenreo. I don't know how you say their name, but... Um, they're going to be speaking at 8.15 this morning, Eastern Standard Time. But then if you guys trade Canadian pairs over here, you have core retail sales coming out, right? So, you know, obviously you guys want to pay attention to that. I don't think any of you guys trade those pairs, so we don't really have to pay attention to that. But you have existing home sales coming out for the U.S., but that's really about it. Mester is going to be speaking today, uh, monetary policy meeting minutes later tonight during the uh, Asian session. So we'll see what that's all about. But other than that, again, very late week until tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit more entertaining. We have CPI coming out for Great Britain. You have CPI coming out for Canada. You have an NPC member speaking as well during uh, London. You have Powell is going to be speaking tomorrow. He's going to be testifying tomorrow. So things are going to be picking up. Jamie, you got consumer confidence coming out for the euro, um, which is probably not going to be too good. Um, and then Thursday, again, big PMI day, right? You also have Powell testifying for the second time, unemployment claims coming out, right? And then Friday, you got retail sales coming out for Great Britain during uh, London. So we'll see if we get any moves during New York to, to follow the London move, if we got a big number. And then you got University of Michigan consumer sentiment and inflation expectations. So we'll keep a lookout on all that. Again, not a heavy week when it comes to fundamentals, but... Again, it's um, there. There should be volume. And there should be moves that we'll be able to catch. Just maybe not as much as you would uh, during a high volume week. Looking at GJ. Uh, so now what we have over here is again monthly candle hasn't really changed. We did push up a little bit more, but yesterday the monthly candle was somewhere around here. Again, we created a healthy bottom wick past the high of that previous candle over here. And now we're looking like a very strong monthly candle over here. I'm, I'm curious how this one closes. Can we close a very strong bullish candle? The next one creates a bottom wick, pushes through 167.500 and keeps mirroring these candles over here to the left. Looking at the weekly. Weekly, we're looking at a perfect retest of 156 over here. 
um, I know, 160 over here where we grabbed liquidity, ended up projecting, closing a very weak bearish candle. This current weekly candle created a bottom wick past the high of that candle. So can we continue up to fill that wick right there? It's still only Tuesday. Looking at the daily, we're still continuing our uh, bullish trend over here since bouncing off this current support, previous resistance uh, over here. We're respecting a perfect bullish trend over here as well. Price just creating higher lows and higher highs. Continuing to push up here. Can we be retesting our area up here? Or high? Again, you got 167,500 over there, but you have 168 as that psychological number up here that we're probably going to end up retesting. So we'll see if we do. But these are perfect bullish candles over here pushing up. Again, weakness in the Japanese yen is, is what that is. You have <clears throat> now our most recent support. We have our previous resistance over here to the left as well, where you had, since tapping off this area, we're actually going to move this down here a little bit. You had a little fake out of this area since breaking, you know, however you want to draw this uh, bearish trend over here. You could also draw it like here. Where price is printing high, lower lows, lower highs over here. Ends up holding support, breaking support, and then coming right back into this range right here. So we ended up coming right back into this range and then breaking the most recent resistance breaking this resistance as well, and then continuing up to create a new high. Or not a new high, but retesting the previous resistance up there. But obviously a new weekly high. So we come down, we hold support in here with this bullish candle right there. Another very strong bullish candle, weak bearish candles. And ever since then, we've been respecting this bullish trend, putting higher lows and higher highs. So now we get a nice clean close above that resistance, which is exactly what we want. Right, so can we get some kind of a pullback into this area, hold support, and continue to drive up today? One hour. One hour now gets a little tricky because now what we ended up doing was creating an indecision candle. We passed the low of that candle and flipped bullish and passed the high of that candle here. So in that case, you need to wait for candles to close. We get the one hour candle, perfect timing about the close um, in two minutes. So you wait for this candle to close, wait for the bottom wick on the next one, wait for the pass to the high of these wicks, and that'll be our trade. 30 minute, 30 minute looks great. Held support here, right? Price is just pushing up over here. Um, nice liquidity grab. The, the thing is like, this would be a valid trade. It would just be risky just because of how that one hour passed the low and the high, right? But this would have been a nice trade after the bullish close, this candle creates its bottom wick and passes the high of that candle. This is on the 30 minute. This is not the 15 or the five. So again, it, it, it makes it more valid for you to take. But let's see how the, the one hour closes in about a minute here. And we'll see if we have any valid entry to take price out. You definitely have enough range, but I want to see price. Only thing is you do have this area right here. Right? that price could very well end up rejecting. But looks like we got a very clean bullish close on the one hour. 30 minute. We don't want it to pass the high right away. We need a bottom wick on the one hour. Let's see, but where is our, where's our TP over here? Where could we take price up into? I mean, obviously, 167,500 up to that level. But you have this level right here that you want to mark off. That's the one hour resistance support and resistance right here. So you may have some room for price to push up into that level. We just got to see what the price action looks like. I, I don't like how this one hour candle looks, um, but it is. it did close a very strong candle. 15 minutes. 15 minute over here had that resistance. Can we hold support right here to continue to drive up? 
Anybody looking at anything differently or the same? There's so many allergies. Sorry. Are you good? Quentin can go first. From... I'm sorry, what was that, Sammy? I think Quentin was talking. Oh, was he? Quentin, you say something? No. No? No, I'm, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for the same. Okay. Yeah. It does look like it's passing the high. Yep. Already, which is... Makes yeah, it kind of invalid, but... It did, and then it retraced a little bit. We're still in the first minute of this candle. So, <clears throat> again, don't be in any rush to take anything out. I'll tell you guys this every day. Just stay patient. Wait for what you want to see. Wait for those confident setups. Those setups that you're like 80 or 90% sure are going to play out. Those are the ones you want to be taking. Anything else, if you guys are just starting out as traders, slide back, test it. If you guys feel more experienced and more confident, then you could take some of those trades, but just make sure you lower your risk. You got to be confident in your risk management and, you know, your control, your emotional control in the market when it comes to uh, entering some of those questionable trades. The ones that you're like 60 or 70 percent sure are going to play out. So now we're getting that uh, retracement, which is great. This is what we want. One hour. See the four hour. Getting four hour closes in uh, two hours. Current four hour looks great too. Already created a bottom wick past the high of that candle. We got clean moves to the left coming up into these areas. So can we can we mirror these moves here? Right up into these areas. I hate to uh, leave GJ. Do you guys want to go over to gold or do you want to stick on GJ and keep watching this? I want to keep an eye on this, to be honest. Keep an eye on this? Okay. Well, we got time to break down gold. Gold right now. Um, gold right now honestly hasn't moved too much. So what we could do is uh, let me just show you guys where we're at right now. Again, we're really sitting between 1870 up here and 1830 right now. We did get that strong weekly candle. This candle created a top wick. is now flipping bearish. Looking at the daily now. We have our level down here with that wick. You have support right here. And again, we came up to retest this consolidation like we went over yesterday. We come down, break the consolidation, come right back up, hold that resistance, and now we keep pushing down. So it looks like we were coming up to, to retest this consolidation, and now we're going to continue down. Unless this is a fake out of 1830 here, and price is going to come down to retest 1830, hold support, and then continue back up, right? Four hour. Again, not, not much different over here. Um, what you did get, though, was a strong close below that level right here. Not, not that strong of a close, but um, it is a strong close, just not below the uh, previous area. Let's go back up to GJ over here. We're starting to flip bullish over here. I just don't want to jump into this too fast. The um, five-minute candle closed like a bullish doji candle. So maybe as we break the high of that, might be valid as long as we don't break the low. I don't know. I personally rather see like a support hold right here. Let's see, where would we, we would have our TP around 167, 100. Our first one, at least for the scalp. Let 
Um, let me just get this thing ready real quick. Perfect. All right, so we're getting a deeper pullback a little bit, so that's good. I'd rather not take like an impulse entry. Um, I'd rather wait for candles to close above this area and uh, close in our direction. So we'll just keep, again, keep an eye on that. We'll go back to gold over here. Gold, again, we did get that strong close, but not that strong below that area. We're really just still sitting in this area. Only thing I do like is the fact that we created a top wick right here, and we're starting to break the low of the previous four hours. So can we continue down from here and possibly fill this wick and come right down into these supports over here, right? <coughs> All right, so looking at the one hour now, we had that consolidation in that area. You know what? We can actually move this down here to this area right there. This one hour candle, Printed a very strong bearish candle. Oh, man, I was just about to call this out. It's doing it quick. This candle created a top wick, passing the low of that candle right there. Might actually, uh, it's not too late to enter based on the 30 minute. Actually, you do have a support here on the 15 minute and the 30 minute. So maybe you want to wait for that to break. Yeah, that might actually save you because you get that support, resistance, resistance, multiple rejections in that area. So maybe you wait for a strong close below that area because these candles look weak. If this candle doesn't have a bottom wick, um, if, if I miss this, I miss it. But I, I do think we'll continue down. But, um, but again, it's a little tricky with this area over here. So we'll see what that looks like. What's up, Lewis? Morning, buddy. Good morning, man. How's your weekend? It's great, bro. How are you guys? Good to hear. Good. We are uh, we just did a quick run through on gold. Uh, nothing too much in detail, just because we haven't really changed much since yesterday. Um, I would really take it easy over here. I was getting enticed by this move, but I think I'd rather see a closed blow here. Or taking some. I do like these wick rejections, but again, these candles in this area, especially to the left, a little, a little weird. Um, but looking at GJ over here, we're still sitting above that resistance, uh, but we need to hold support over here, and that's what we're looking for, uh, for us to take some at least up into that 100 area, about 40 pips away. So you definitely grab a nice little scalp in here uh, to continue the four-hour move. If you take a look at the four-hour. Very strong four-hour candle. Already created a bottom wick past the high of that candle. Are we just retracing now to then continue back up and, uh, you know, fill this area? So two five-minute candles ended up rejecting this area here right? Which is good. You need a bullish candle close to see where we're going to end up heading. The worst mosquito bite on my arm. So annoying. Let's see. So on gold here, the 15 minute is going to close below the support in the next, well, I don't know if it's going to close below, but um, it's going to close in the next five minutes. So can it close below that support there and continue down? Again, you guys don't want to get too antsy during pre-New York. Like, you know, you have plenty of moves and you only have two moves to take. So you, you know, you have plenty of moves during New York. You have plenty of moves during later in New York. Um, you know, later in the session, like around 9 30, 10 AM, 11 AM, there's plenty of moves in that area. So, do you want to like rush anything during pre-New York? Maybe not. Just stay patient during this time. 
plan your trades out for the whole session and take it accordingly. Because again, you're going to have opportunities uh, down the road or, you know, in the same session. But, you know, right now, a lot of these opportunities during pre-New York, they don't always play out. They always fake you out and all of a sudden you're left with one more trade to take and then you end up uh, close to break even if uh, you end up taking another winner. Back to GJ. So wait for that close below there on gold. If you're going to take anything. Cool. <clears throat> DJ. I want to break down more pairs, but I want to see what GJ ends up doing here. This one hour wick might be enough for you to keep your stop loss below it to continue up, which would be great for like a, a risk or reward standpoint. Anybody have any questions or anybody have any charts besides Jamie that they want me to go over? That's how you get better, guys. G -g 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 -g. Right. Japanese finance minister Suzuki says he is concerned about the recent sharp yen weakening. Let's take a look at the yen right now. Yeah, weekly still flipping bearish over here, passing the low of the previous daily again, like gapped up there. We're still holding this support in here with this bullish candle four hour, bullish four hour candle. But again, holding a resistance could very well continue down today. This continues down from here. Retest the low, expect a nice move on GJ to continue up. Getting this deeper pullback, okay. This is why you don't get antsy. Same thing with gold over here too. Stay patient. All right, so now we have a little bit more time on our hands that we can wait for this. Again, I'll be keeping an eye on GJ over here. Make sure it doesn't leave without us. But let's, uh, I'm gonna break that in US 30. All right. What we're looking at over here. So we have this like level around 29, let's say around 3,000. We'll mark it off 30,000. Um, basically holding support and resistance over here, current support right now. Um, obviously, we have our all time highs up here. Prices now we're tracing, we broke previous support, and then we're pushing all the way down into these areas over here. Looking at the weekly now, weekly is holding support so far at that 130 level. Or 30,000 level, I'm sorry. Holding support in this level over here, previous support as well. So can we get a pullback back up into our area up here of like 31,200? Previous support, resistance, we faked the level out over here before continuing up over there. Um, but can we get a pullback into this area and then continue down? We now created a higher low with this wick, and now we're flipping bullish. Looking at the daily. Looking at the daily, again, holding a support. You get that resistance over there. You could probably just adjust this a little bit here. Again, low created, retracement. Could we be retesting here to continue down or continue back up? 
four hour over here. So you got 30,000 there, but I'm just gonna adjust this most recent support resistance. Now what you have is this consolidation. Charm and I broke down US 30 yesterday and, and what we saw was this range yesterday, right? Price is staying in this range, now we're breaking out of it. Can we get a pullback into this area, hold support and then continue up? We ended up holding support here on the one hour after creating this high. And now you have a previous resistance that can now hold as support after creating this high up here. 30 minute. So can we hold right here? and continue up from here. Breaking off this key area, hold support, kind of like, like right over here to then continue up. And can you, can you grab something like that? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Good to hear. All right, back to, so G, uh, gold ended up closing a little bit below, I would say, right? We, we did close below that support, you know, fairly strong candle. But if this candle creates a top wick and pass the low of that candle, we could very well grab a nice move in that seven o'clock hour. Mm, it did. <clears throat> Again, many top wick rejections over here and candle flips. So you have all that seller pr uh, pressure to continue down. So can we get that top wick here and then continue to fill this area? Let's look to the left over here. Yeah, obviously you have 18,000 right there. Once you break, let's look. Where could we go specifically? Or 1830. Right here, get that move all the way down into this support over here. So you can very well grab a move down there. 30 minute is now flipping bullish over here, which I don't like. We'll see what we end up getting. One hour, so we're expecting the low of the previous, trying to make that bottom wick, it looks like. 30 minute. Let's see if we get like that deeper pullback back into here, hold support, like a higher low, and then continue out from here. <clears throat> All right. Anybody? One, what's up, Sammy? Like, this is one thing I haven't been doing is like just waiting like this. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Like the past two or three weeks, I've been like just getting very antsy. Yeah. Just jumping into trades without any logic. If you know what I mean? Yeah. And today, it feels like I'm waiting for myself, you know, and I feel like I'm going to get paid if I wait. In my, in my mind, it's, um, it's playing. Sometimes it's just about digging it back to square one and, and uh, getting right back to like what was successful for you. That is exactly why AARs are so important. Because when you're writing in your AAR, when you're successful, like let's say you're going through a two-week win streak, two or three-week win streak, and you're just like killing it, right? You're writing yeah. down all the things that you're doing right in that trading journal, that trading AAR. And now you can go back when you're in a slump read through that, like Quentin is doing right now. Quentin is reading through all his previous AARs for the past, um, since March, right? So he's got about two weeks worth of material that he could be uh, um, reading through. I, and when I say two weeks of material, like it could take him like two weeks to read through all that stuff. If he reads like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes a day. And like yeah. him doing that, he's going to learn so much from what he was doing in the past as a trader. Same exact thing with your trading journal uh, on Trello. 
it's like you look back at a trade a few weeks ago and you're like, you know, I'm, I'm a much better trader now. I wouldn't have taken that or I would have done this a lot differently. That builds yeah. confidence. Definitely, yeah. But that's awesome that you're sitting back waiting a little bit the way you were. Um, do you, you're going to build your confidence right back up that quickly. And again, like it's the what, what's supposed to be happening right now for you guys, like as you guys get better as traders, is there's always going to be ebbs and flows. There's always going to be like a, a losing streak or um, a confidence um, killer where, you know, you go through a couple of trades and it's just like not there. Um, when, when you're going through that right now, that might take a long time. Like that may take a, a few weeks for you to like climb yourself out of it. But as you get more experience, you'll be able to snap out of it a lot quicker. So just keep that in mind that, that you're going to be in that spot down the road. But you got to be able to embrace the times where you're struggling, the times where you're losing, and take those for what they are and able to learn from them. And, and they make you better. They make you stronger. They make you tougher as a man. Um, they, they test your skill. They test your, your emotions. They test everything, your logic. That's yeah, why I'm trading is so hard right there. I saw this quote yesterday. It said, it's a bad day, not a bad life. Yeah. So that's, I, I try to implement that in trading. Like every time I take a loss, it's not a bad life. It's just a bad day. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And what you want to do is um, when it comes to like the work you're putting in, focus on the day. Like, like, <clears throat> like just keep your horse blinders on. I'm only focused on the day right now when it comes to the work I'm putting in. But when it comes to trading, trading is much different from business where you need to look in, in different perspectives when it comes to trading. Because with business, you know, with, tra with trading, you need to focus on the week and the month as a whole and the year as a whole specifically. Right. Like you don't need to to catch a crazy trade today. You need to make sure you're accumulating the right trades over the course of a week to make sure you end that week positive. Yeah. And that's that's all that matters. The week, the month and specifically the year. You got to think to yourself, like, how much do I want to make per year? Right. And how much like of that am I going to risk and how much am I going to keep? Mm. Right. So yeah. if you want to, if you want to make, I don't know, two hundred grand a year, you know, you got to do the math to, to find out like how much I need to make per day to do that, or per week to do that, and more specifically per week, I would say. You know, yeah. start striving for that. But if you're not ready for for focusing on the money as much, uh, don't do it. Focus on the skill right now. We're just stacking good trades. And you guys hear that machine? I don't. That's all I know. Did a machine go? There's a machine going outside. Oh, okay. It's not my, it's not my house, though. It's not someone else's house. Got it. Did you take anything yesterday, Sammy? No, nothing. Good stuff. Good stuff. I only need, like, two... Uh, to be honest, when I'm putting into perspective, I, need, I only need like two, three good trades a week, and I'll be good. Wow, nice. But when I think of it like that, I'll be, I don't need to rush anything. You know what I mean? It's good for you to like understand, like you know what what you need to to be successful. Definitely, yeah. that's pretty key right there. Yeah, I messaged you yesterday. I don't know if you messaged back. Let me, uh, let me see. It was just about our yes, our did. Zoom. And you would like to do it at 5.45 instead of 5? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's... That, that should be good for me. No worries, that's fine. That's perfect for me, anyway. Beautiful. The, um... What's it called? We may have to be a little bit less than than um, than normal. Um, and, and it probably wouldn't last more than 30 minutes anyway. But, uh... Yeah. You know, um, I, I got to be somewhere at 7. That's fine. That's fine because I think we, we spoke on what day was it? Was it Wednesday, I think? Thursday? Of last week? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so this is a little touch up. Yes, sir. I want to see the uh, early showing of the uh, Elvis movie tonight. Is it coming out tonight? 
Uh, no, it comes out thir- Friday, I think. But I was able to get like early showing tickets. Oh yeah, are you a big Elvis Elvis fan? Uh, yeah, grow- since since I was a kid, uh, my grandpa introduced me to him, and ever since then I've. And then like all the people I listen to now, uh, oh, if you wow. think of like the Beatles, the the um, the Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones. All these different bands all took everything. Like he has a stamp on all this music because he basically like started a lot of it and he took a lot of it. Like Jamie, I don't know if you know much about him, do you? Somewhat, you know. I mean, I I follow some of it, but not a lot of it. <laughs> oh, okay. So he he was almost like Eminem in a way, where he grew. He was a very small minority of white kids in a black neighborhood in, in Memphis. And what he would do is go down to Beale Street. You got Little Richard down there, um, Chuck Berry, all these people down in Memphis um, in these like black churches and stuff. And he got a lot of his inspiration from them. Uh, and this movie supposedly goes into detail with that and, and gives them a lot of credit. Sister, uh, who's, the, who's the original singer of Hound Dog? Um, Sister Thorpe or something like that down in the South. Um, but like he got a lot of his inspiration, a lot of his good friends were all, you know, African-American down there. Um, and he brought their music to light. Like if it wasn't for him, unfortunately, like we don't know if we would have R&B right now or, um, you know, even rap, if you think about it. Um, like a lot of, he was able to bring a lot of that music to light and he gave them a lot of credit. Like everyone would call him the king. He's like, I'm not the king. Like call them the king because, you know, that's where I got a lot of my stuff from from i'm not i'm not too familiar with i think it's before my time of course of course yeah it's 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 not normal for uh younger people to to be into them but this movie i think is going to bring a lot of have you seen the trailer yet you're kind of young too so Uh, yeah yeah i'm not you know i'm typically not you know most people my age don't don't listen to Elvis, but The, the movie, I think, is going to, like, bring a whole new generation into, like, appreciating who he was. Because it, it goes into the humanity of him. I think you guys would, um, would appreciate this. This dude would, like, loved new technology in the day. Like, he would have the new TVs and, and like, he, you know, he obviously, like, invented bling pretty much. But, like, what he would do is he would go to a dealership and just buy some lady a car. You know, uh, Shaq does this now, where he would just just go buy, like, a bunch of, like, if he bought a motorcycle, he'd buy, buy all his other friends' motorcycles. If he, you know, was walking down the street and he saw somebody wearing a watch, he would trade his $40,000 watch for someone that's wearing, like, a regular watch uh, just because he liked that watch better, and he would give him his watch. And like oh, from, from listening, yeah, from listening to a lot of your goals, it sounds like a lot of you guys are the same way. Like you, you'd want to be the same way when you're making a lot Give of money. Back. Giving back, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I heard the actor like he like really thought like studied him really deeply. Well, the thing was he um they they started filming right before COVID, and then COVID happened, and they were filming in Australia. And if you remember, Tom Hanks was like the first celebrity to get COVID. You remember that? Tom Hanks and his wife? Yeah, I do. They were filming this movie in Australia uh, when both of them got it. So Austin Butler elected not to go back to the U.S. and elected to, uh, to stay in Australia and just like study the role. So he did nothing but Elvis for like two and a half years and just it looks like he nailed it. Like they went to Cannes, the um, film festival in, in France, and got I think the a twelve or thirteen minute standing ovation. Mm. What time are you gonna watch it? What's up? Oh, what time are you gonna watch it today? Uh, the the showing's at six or seven, I believe. Oh. Let me uh. See if we can find some. (laughs) 
Damn, this trailer got 9 million views. I just sent the trailer in there. The chat. It's going to be like the uh, Queen movie. You guys see that? Bohemian Rhapsody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. Yeah, I think this is going to be even better. This is This is almost three hours long. I watched a few reactions of people like coming out of the theater that saw early as well. And everyone's like blown away by it. So I'm pumped. Again, we get a a flip over here on the 15 minute on gold. Um, So again, it never passed the low of that candle. I could see the next one creating a top wick passing low of these wicks. And then we get that volume uh, post 730. But we'll see what we get. But it looks like we're trying to hold that support here. That getting that deeper pullback here on GJ, which is great. Um, you know, let's see if we get a 30-minute close here. Looks like this could be the 30-minute uh, zone right there. And if we get a 30-minute close, that'd be nice. You looking for buys? Uh, yeah. If, if, if we see what we like, right? But Yeah. <clears throat> I don't like buys in this area, to be honest. What's up? I don't like bias in this area. Okay. Why, why is that? I just think that it's just the move, the, the bullish move, the, yeah, it's, the bullish move is overextended. Okay. And, uh, and I think that it's just trying to get more liquidity to go down. I, that's just my opinion. Oh, beautiful. That's, that's awesome. I, I love hearing your opinions and seeing like why you're thinking what you're doing. You got to think critically in these markets. And the more you guys do that, the better. The more we challenge each other on our ideas, the better we're going to be. Now, and also, like, if you can, uh, on the daily and on the four hour, if you do, I mean, I know you, you don't, but sometimes I do like to use uh, pips. And right now, they're sitting on a, on a strong uh, selling area. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm, the 786. The, what, uh, a Fibonacci or something? Mm-hmm. So where would you draw it from? Up here? Um, I drew it from, yeah, from, from, yeah, side. Like right here to down here? Yeah. You need point six. Okay. The only thing with that is drawing it like that is the fact that we're in a bullish trend on the higher time frames, right? And now what you have here is a higher low being formed and we're in a bullish trend on the daily. Mm-hmm. Four hour, same exact thing, right? Um, so what I'm looking at here is like maybe, I mean, I haven't used Fibonacci's in a minute, but right here, how we like came down, created this high over here, and we come down to that 23 area and start pushing up. We didn't get a deeper pullback than that. Um, again, I don't really use these, but what I am looking at here is I actually just adjusted it while we were talking here. The current area of interest for me that we're now retesting is this previous support and resistance. It's now holding as a support. Mm. The 30 minute yeah. candle, we're pushing up. The four hour candle actually created a bottom wick already at following a very strong bullish candle and already passed the high of that candle. It just retraced a little bit, but now we could be continuing up from here. So now is this candle flipping? Can we enter a trade here? Gotcha. All right. We're holding a nice support. We got the bullish momentum on our side. We have a weak, very weak Japanese yen that's holding a resistance to possibly continue down. Right? Yeah, well, why why is the yen being so weak lately? Uh, just weak monetary policy. Right? Mm-hmm. They refuse to increase rates. Uh, and, and you're just seeing that thing tank. They, they like the, the weaker monetary policy. Easy to do business. Uh, that's that's how they are. It's very yeah. interesting, uh, Japan, and how they adopted our democracy right after World War II. Even after we bombed them twice, uh, after what they were doing, um, the the amount of uh, acceptance they had for us and our culture and everything uh, is, is pretty interesting. 
This is interesting here on the 15 minute. We got a lot of momentum. If we pass the high this 30 minute, I think this might be good for an entry right here. You may want to wait for this 30 minutes to close. That might be better for you, but it looks like we have a lot of bullish momentum that if we pass the high of that candle, we could continue up. You see the volume in this candle, how much it's pushing right now. Let's see how the five minute reacts to this area or the one minute. If we start pushing through there, then you know maybe it's, it's pretty valid. Again, we're making higher lows here in the one minute, which is good, but we have this high right here that we need to like break through. We ended up just rejecting 167, 800. 166,800. This is where those lower time frames come in handy. All right. A lot of people probably got very antsy right here and ended up buying up here already. I was close. I know you were. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was like my finger was on the trigger. And I was like, just break and it didn't. So, yeah. no, I, I would have taken that. If the 30 minute right here, actually yeah. broke the high of that candle, I probably would have taken that when my stops below this 30 minute. Lower my risk just because I want I'd rather wait for candles to close in my direction. But uh that would have probably been valid. Just because yeah. of that volume pushing up. But if we get a nice 30 minute close that'd be that'd be great. <clears throat> Even a 15 minute close here, the next one creates a bottom wick past the high of these wicks here and then we could take this thing up. <clears throat> Got about 30 pips in this range right here. And this, this trade, this buy, is really based on that four hour. How we already created that bottom wick and we're just pushing up here. We're clean moves to the left. Yep, a lot of people probably got faked out right there. Gold, again, deeper pullback. Yeah, these top wicks over here, they were telling me that we could continue down like they did. But, you know, once you start stalling out and getting, like, weaker bodies, you know, these wicks get filled. You find support and these wicks get filled. <clears throat> All right. So since we're waiting over here, anyone, ah, anybody want to break down the chart? Come on, who wants to get better? I know Jamie does, but he's giving you guys a chance. Yeah, I'm getting dressed in the background as well because I got to make an early exit. So, brothers, step up. Please, please step up. <laughs> All good, man. You got work early today? Yeah, we're getting some new uh, internet circuits put into the facilities for Nestle. So I got an AT&T guy that's supposed to be meeting me at my manufacturing plant. And then I got a couple of meetings that start exactly at nine. Okay. So I have to make sure I beat the traffic and the aggravation to get in there and get set up. Yeah, you guys got a lot of that down there. Oh, yeah. Beach. I'm going to be finishing work at 3 a.m. in the morning or something today. It's uh, it's the national uh, music day in France. Is it really? Yeah. So wow. tonight there's gonna be like bands everywhere in the city playing in the street. That's actually pretty sick. I would love yeah, to be there for that. Very cool. I, I've been playing in the in the in the streets in Paris when I was uh, uh, playing guitar uh, in a school uh, in, in a music school. Get out of here. That was sick, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, behind the bar tonight there you until go. Uh, all these drunk people stop drinking beer, making uh making all the tips. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know if the if these people are gonna be giving that much. True. Yeah, but I mean, you know, all these people accumulated is gonna give you a nice. Uh, Let's yeah, change, yeah. yeah, in France, we we tend uh, people tend to not uh, give that much tips as in in the U.S. because we are paid more by our employer, mm, okay. and so all the people that come to just buy a beer uh, do not give any tip. Wow, that's weird. 
I mean, again, that's that's culture. It's just yeah, um, you know, like there, there's many things that we probably do that you think are weird. <laughs> but remind me, if I ever come to France, it's going to be during that week. Oh yeah, you would is like it, is it always? What is it? I'm going to write this down. Always, always June twenty first. June twenty first, France Music Week. And where is it? All, all over France. June twenty first. Where's the best place to be during it? Uh, I only know Paris. Probably Paris. I mean, it's, I'd imagine it's crazy all over this, the city. It's like but sometimes you get, those, you get those low key cities that um, not yeah. many people know about that are like yeah, that's true. That's much true. better than the capital. Uh, I don't. I'm not that much of a party guy, so I don't really know about that. I, I couldn't tell. No, but yeah, I've I've always wanted to. Uh, I I wouldn't say I've always wanted to, but you know, I, I would definitely be interested in going to France at some point. Uh, I know my wife would. Uh, so if we do, it'll it'll be at that time. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to take a video of the of the show tonight uh, on the uh, right in front of the restaurant I work in. There's a big stage. Big stake. Stage. St oh, big stage. Nice. Yeah, this big stage. Oh, yeah. You guys are going to have a ton of people in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. In case you guys haven't noticed, I'm, I'm big on music. Yeah. I think music's awesome. Can you sing? Man. What was that? Can you sing? Ah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would not... You know, I, I sing along. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I don't, sing in the shower. Yeah, uh, not really in the shower. I watch training videos in the shower. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I bring my phone in there and um, I'm just, you know, constantly, you got to like download your brain with like positive shit. So every once in a while, I'll watch like an entertainment video in there, but, um, you know, something on the Jets too. But uh, most of it's like a lot of training videos and, you know, throw that on in the, in the background. Did you say the Jets? Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm a Giants fan, so we're both both stuck in purgatory right now. But uh, it's yeah. funny that you said the Jets. Wow, I'm surprised you're a Giants fan. Yeah, well, when I came up from the islands, that was the first team I saw, and they were playing wow. the 49ers. Typically how and, uh, Yeah, and I just I fell in love with the smash mouth, you know, uh, football, you know, they were just, I mean, stomping on people, you know, Lawrence Taylor, Pepper Johnson, you know, all those guys. So I just fell in love with it, man. I met Lawrence Taylor a few times. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he, um, I, I was, I was running the front desk at a big resort down here, um, years ago while I was in college. I was coming back during, uh, summer. Um, and he would come in a lot. There were a bunch of people that used to come in, but he would come in a lot. He's, he's a big drunk. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. And a cokehead. <laughs> what? And a cokehead too. Oh yeah. yeah, he's he's pretty nuts. He was very nice to me, but uh, mm -hmm. there was actually an incident. If you if you search uh, Lawrence Taylor incident in hotel, it was mm -hmm. at the hotel. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah you'll be able. To, oh, I actually want to see it right now. Um, but before we do, I'm looking at gold over here. We're starting to break over here. Break the low. Can we continue down? The one hour is going to close. Is it worth taking this impulse entry with your stop loss up here? Or do you want to wait for the hour close uh, below the support and take this base on the hourly? All right, especially being in this area. So that's up to you. But I, it does look good. Four hour looks aligned, right? That we could continue right back down daily. Again, breaking the low of the previous daily candles. We could very well be continuing down from here. This looks beautiful, actually. Um, 15 minute close on GJ over here. Bullish. I think we create a healthy bottom wick and pass the high of these candles. We could take this, but I like gold a lot. All right, let's see. Um, <clears throat> GJ over here, like a nice gold. Let's 
see where we end up. I'm still waiting on GJ to pass the 30 minute high. Okay. I don't know if you think that's good or. Yeah, no, I, at this point, I think I may. You may want to wait for the, uh, the, hour, the 30 minute to close here and then take this base off the 30 minute. The next one creating a bottom wick passing the high. Yeah. That's a psychological level there, 800. Patience, patience, patience. Their one hour looks like a week, like an undecided candle on GJ. On G yeah, I know. Yeah. But again, like the only thing is that that four hour looks great. Healthy bottom wick, same size as the previous bottom wick, past the high light candle, clean move to the left. You do have this area though, you may want to. And you may need to look out for. Still struggling. Let's look at the lower time frames here. See now the one minute has been consolidating over here. So the one minute you need like a, a close above this area and like a, a an exit and like a retest and then continue up. Let's see that happen. Crazy. Wow, my chest is sore. Oh wow, there we go. All right. Um okay, I am in gold right here. Let's see. Taking this. I'm looking for just a quick scalp over here. GJ right now did close above on the one a minute. And we're now exiting that area. So we'll see where we end up going. Let's see if we get like a little retest right there. Is anybody in GJ right now? No, not me. Okay. Sammy? That looks good. But I am in EJ plus 20. Yeah. <clears throat> good shit, man. Since when? The, the last 30 minutes, actually, let me see. So I'll send you the snapshot real quick. Oh, beautiful. It's a great move right there. There you go. Nice. So Jimmy took this. <clears throat> this candle formed this bottom wick, passed the eye of that candle, entered right there. Only thing is that resistance right there, I guess, is right. one to one, right? Yep. So that's my one to one, and I'm taking 75%. Ooh, well, there you go. She just shot past it. So hang on, please. Let me take my 75%. Yes, sir. Take it. Well done, man. Gold looking good. All right. We are good to go. Now I'm running risk free. 
Great job, man. Here, hold on. You deserve a little air hold on. Oh, yeah. It is. You got a bell over there? <laughs> That's my, uh, <laughs> my freaking phone going off. Oh. You know that. <laughs> But, oh, I did get something, and I have one for you when I do see you, so uh, here hey, you go. Oh, come on. Not working? That was easy. <laughs> I haven't heard one of those in a while. <laughs> yep, I actually found them. Staples. Come on, gold, let's go. Yeah, guys, try not to be in two different scalps at the same time. Like, typically, this would be great to be in both of these right now, but I ended up going with gold. We'll see if that ends up uh, hurting me or not. Yeah, 15 minute keeps retracing over here. Oh, you know what? Five minute? We could be retesting this area. I think if the five minutes starts closing up in this area, we could close uh, partials. But if we just retest this uh, support right here and continue down, that'd be great. TJ looks great. That's that volume push we were talking about, right at around like 7.30 to 8. You know, you always get, or not always, but you get that a lot of the time. That's what we capitalize on, on as uh, volume traders. Absolutely. I've been, I've been watching this and stalking this. And when I went through my Trello, most of the trades, especially like the ones that I miss, whatever, you catch that, like that 7.30, 7 o'clock run, push right up through that 8 o'clock open, and it'll keep running right up until that nine when that four hour candle closes. Mm. So, but then right around there, like the last 15 minutes before that four hour candle, you get that retracement, like that pullback, mm -hmm. almost like it wants to leave a top wick, you know, just for the next candle to fill, yeah. and which isn't bad, but you know, it kind of, it kind of rattles the nerves a little bit. So you're wondering, okay, is this going to continue? What is it going to do? Yep. Keep yeah, keep recording the, those things. That's great. Yes, All right, so looking at gold now. Let's see, thirty minute, thirty minutes, messing around over here, having some trouble in this area. Not going to micromanage it. We're still bearish. But we are paying attention to how this 15 minute did flip bullish. It's just a weak bullish candle. We could very well continue down from here. We're not back above this range yet. If we start closing above there, then we got an issue. Well, we don't have an issue. We can manage risk and, you know, onto the next trade. We just learn. Starting to look like I took the wrong train, huh? <laughs> All right. So the five minute start to break back into this area over here. I want to see if it breaks this resistance or if it starts to respect it. If it starts to break that, then I'll probably close the full thing. Keep my finger on it. I think just because we keep like printing these lower highs, we could end up uh, <clears throat> rejecting that area right there and printing another lower high to continue down. 
but we'll see. Yeah, one hour. Gold's tricky, man. All right, we're flipping bullish here. Still didn't break that resistance for five minutes. Remember your main lesson, or not lesson, but main objective is capital preservation. Yeah, I was pissed at myself for a moment for not taking GJ. Yeah, it's, it happens, you know? But that's it. Um, just journal it. Good, perfect. That's what you want to do. You want to journal your trade, learn from it, and then take that next time. I had a little inkling of a feeling that I was taking the wrong one, but gold looked nice. Wanted that quick volume push. And I, I thought it looked nicer than GJ taking this impulse entry um, over here, you know? Yeah, but to me, the 15 minutes actually looks better than the 30 on GJ. 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at the 30 minute at first, but. Yeah, I didn't want to take it based on the 30 minute. Um, or on the uh, 15 minute. Yeah, That's kind of why I, I liked gold a little bit better. But there's th certain things about gold that. Are a little iffy too, like the one hour candle closing with no bottom wick over there. Yeah, we're, we're in a tricky spot when it comes to gold, but can we continue through here? This is the question. Yep. Now we're starting to break that resistance. Do a little pullback, manage a little risk right here. Let's see where is it? Damn, GJ. All right. I would just opened. I didn't cut 50 yet, but if this candle creates a low and breaks the high that candle, I'm going to close the full thing instead of 50. Um, which I actually think may happen because the one hour candle. Close bullish. Yeah, let's see what we do over here. Just try not to micromanage this on the five minute here, but. Like I'm looking at this whole area that's holding as a resistance. Previous support, support, resistance right in here.
And we'd be done already if we took DJ. Working out. I think you muted yourself, Steph. Nice, buddy. <laughs> I was saying um, th this, we have two and a half minutes until this five minute closes. So I want to see if we actually close bearish and we actually respect this area over here. I'm just trying, trying to hold on to this one a little bit, just because I lowered my risk a little bit for the, uh, for the actual trade, being that it was an impulse entry before the, uh, before eight o'clock. So we'll see if this um, continues down. It's got some, I gave it some room to breathe here. Like I said, if this candle flips bullish and past the high of that candle, I'm out. Not yet. At least it has a wick now. Before it kind of didn't have a wick. Oh, no, oh, the, the one hour? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess it does have a very small wick. So, yeah, small wick. Nothing to hang your hat on. Starting to flip. Nope. And I'm out. Nice. Okay. Happy with that. Again, like I said, I, I managed, well, not happy with it. I'd rather win the trade, but um, entered as we passed the low right here, right? Um, stop loss right up here. Um, as this candle started to retrace a little bit, we ended up just, I, I wanted to wait for this one. And honestly, like the 30 minute did close bullish back into this range. So I should have managed risk right then and there. But um, I wanted to give it enough, you know, enough room to breathe just because these candles were forming the way they were. This candle created a healthy top wick past the low of these candles. I just wanted to lower risk down to like 0.8%. Um, right. And once I did that, then I just cut the full thing right around here. So we'll see if we get like maybe even a re entry. But if not, I'm good. We'll manage loss onto the the uh, next one, and that's it. Not happy that missing DJ though. This was all called out. This TP as well. <clears throat> Also, the four hour lined up, we were calling it the entire time. All right, brother, I got to run, but I did close out at two to one. Didn't want to be greedy. Beautiful. Um, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to journal it and, uh, I may stay away from the market for the rest of the day because the last time I did this, it, it shellacked me. <laughs> I said, you know what? I think I'm just going to close the charts and empty four and just uh, walk away for the rest of the day. Great job, man. Yeah. Great trade. <laughs> great great <laughs> management. Great everything. So keep it up, man. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. My pleasure. All right, brothers. I'll see you guys in the chat. Yes, sir. Should have taken DJ. Yeah, I'm pretty annoyed about it too. 
That's all right. Just can't act on the uh, FOMO. My daughter loves bananas. You wait for some sort of support to form a DJ now, or uh, this this was the move of the morning. It's very easy to to watch this happen, get the FOMO, buy up here, and then they get faked out, right? But if we get a nice setup up here, absolutely, right? I'll take this up to one sixty seven five hundred. But I'm not going to be um, antsy or jumping into anything. I like how I manage uh, risk over here. Again, I think, uh, honestly, maybe I don't. Because what I could have done is, after this candle started flipping bullish, I could have closed 50 right here, right? Five minute, after that five minute candle closed back into this area, I could have closed 50. But um, the 15 minute ended up closing bear, uh, bullish up in here. Uh, I should I should have exited right there, knowing that we were going to get this. But again, I... I actually did exit right there, but a little bit later. So it's all good. Well managed. Move to fight another day. See how, like, these wicks were printed and now they're getting filled up here? That's what I was talking about. A lot of times when you have, like, a lot of top wicks like that with weak bodies on the downside, these wicks get filled. So at this point, I would stay out of gold just because it's in a, a sticky area over here and you really don't have a nice move until maybe you break like 1844 right in this area for buys. You take this up here. But other than that, if you look at the lower time frames, like one hour, just mess. GJ over here, I'd wait for some kind of a pullback if you're going to take anything, but this was the move of the morning. And understanding that you're going to have moves of the morning is extremely important. Yeah. all right so with that being said guys i'm gonna hop off um again this was the move of the morning goal we lost but i think we managed risk pretty well um again only lost a fraction of what I, I was uh risking so that within itself is a win it should be a win for a lot of people uh and basically you know we we didn't let this happen we didn't extend our loss uh, stop loss or anything like that which is something we never do but um you know, it's worth being said. But uh, guys, do you have any questions at all before we hop off? Do you want to go over a chart or anything like that that you uh, that you guys are looking at? No, oh, it's good. You're all good? Yeah. Okay. Lewis, you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I took the same gold trade as you, but I, I managed it pretty well, too. I only took a very small loss. So Great I job. think I'm done for today. Yeah, you know, nothing crazy. That's That's a win within itself. When, when you can manage risk, you you focus on capital preservation, that's it. And now we, we live to fight on for the next trade. And now you, you're not like, damn, I got to make that thing back. It's nah. it's, now, it's like now it's a little loss. And, um, you know, we're just going to focus on the next trade. Where if you take a it's, big loss, you're almost always just focused on making that back. Yeah, I know. And that's not where you want to be. 
So just understanding that and focusing on the week, focus on the accumulative week. And, you know, the next trade is going to be a win and you're going to eventually have a, have a, 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 have a successful week to finish off with a bunch of accumulated trades that um, are either well-managed or wins. Yep. All right. Sammy, you got any questions? You're all good? Get a nice pullback here on DJ. So maybe uh, you might have an opportunity for, for price to hold support and continue up. Because again, you're, you're trading this four hour candle and expecting price to continue up possibly. I could very well see it's getting a pullback over here on the four hour. But again, we'll see what we get. All right, guys. All right, bro. Have a good guys, day. Have a great day, man. I will see you all tomorrow morning, bright and early. Tomorrow, we're actually with Sharma, and she's actually going to be on the East Coast. So we're going to be doing it at 630 as well, not 7. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. See you, boys. Good day. You too, man. See you later, guys. Have a great day, all right?